Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to cover what exactly is app storage and how it can minimize your work if you want to persist information in user defaults. So first of all, I am using Xcode 12 and I'm using it on Mac Sur. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's say that I want to create an application where I allow the user to turn on and turn off the dark mode. So how do I do it? Well, I can always go ahead and create a local state, which can be a private and is dark mode. This can be a simple Boolean and I can initialize it to be false. If I want this dark mode to be turned on or turned off, this means that I pretty much need a toggle is on and I can use binding. So is dark mode and some sort of a label. If you want, we can go ahead and put a label. We can say enable dark mode or select a mode. Now this will work just fine and it will display a toggle. We can also go ahead and create the toggle with a fixed size. Great. Let's go ahead and run this. Now if I run this, I can go ahead and set the toggle to different modes. If I want to display a particular property or a text based on that mode, I can go ahead and put my toggle into a vStack and I can go ahead and create a text property or a text view. If it is in dark mode, then we will say dark or else we will say light mode. Simple if and else check. Let's go ahead and run this. And now when the switch is on, the dark mode is enabled and we can see dark. And when the switch is off, we just see light. That's all great, but when I close the app, or I turn off the app and run the app again, it always starts with the dark light mode. And the reason that it starts with the light mode is that even though we change the light mode to dark mode, we never really persisted that setting. This part is dark mode. Now we can persist it in the database. We can persist it on the server's database and all that stuff, but it will be much easier if we are simply persisting it in user defaults. So one of the new things that was introduced in iOS 14 and Swift UI is ability to simply mark this property with app storage, app storage. And app storage is just a property wrapper and it allows you to save the property into the name that you provide over here. So I'm going to simply say is dark mode. Now, the other part of the code remains the same. So what now is going to happen is that whenever we set the property to is dark mode, since we are decorating this with app storage is dark mode, in the user defaults, we will create a new property automatically which will be is dark mode and it will be set to, initially it will be set to false. But when we run our application again, then it will be set to whatever we are doing. So if we make this available or select dark mode enable is to true, now you can see that we can set it to false or we can set it to true. Let's go ahead and set it to true, meaning dark mode is enabled and go ahead and stop your app. You can see it's still set to dark mode enable. Let's go ahead and run this and it's still there. Let me go ahead and set it to light mode and I will go ahead and stop and I will start again. And you can see that the value actually persists. So in other words, our last value, whatever we put inside user default is obviously persisting. If I go ahead and set it to another dark mode and I will stop the app and I will run it again, you can see that it loads the same exact state. 
So this is a really good way to persist the values in user defaults. Without the property wrapper, you will have to write a bunch of code to do that on the fly. But with the property wrapper app storage, which is a brand new property wrapper, you can simply wrap it with one single wrapper and uh, that property value will be stored in the key value pair is dark mode will be the key and the value will be the boolean either it will be true or it will be false so it's much much easier to persist the values in user default in the new version of swift ui in ios 14. if you like this video and want to support my channel then the best way would be to check out my courses on udemy i have a course called swift ui declarative interfaces for any apple device this is a 17 plus hour course and it covers everything you can imagine about Swift UI. I'm constantly updating the course also. So you can see that we start with building list and navigation and we even take a deep dive into MVVM design pattern, APIs consuming and also core data. I also go down into uh, the recipes where I talk about building a rating view. And I'm also covering Swift 2.0. We have already have all of these amazing lectures and I'm keep on adding more and more and more stuff to it, making it better. Now, the best way to get this course is check out the link in the YouTube description. Simply click on the link and get the course. Please, if you want to get this course or any of my other courses, use the link in the YouTube description. That will be very, very helpful. Uh, your support really means a lot to me. Uh, I do want to do this like full time. So if you do want to support me, please use the links to, to get these videos, buy the courses. They are not that expensive. Uh, I've worked hundreds and hundreds of hours on those courses and you're getting it for a very, very, very big discount. So please use the links in the YouTube description. Thank you so much and thank you so much again for supporting my videos.